Welcome to my seminar Avionic Devices. In this video, I will show you basic underwater navigation and localization techniques. In general, one can differentiate between three main types of navigation systems for underwater vehicles. Inertial navigation systems, which uses inertial sensors like accelerometers and gyroscopes to propagate the current state with increased accuracy. But in spite of that, one will get errors in position, which accumulates to unbounded error growth. External acoustic systems, navigation is based on measuring the time of flight of acoustic signals to determine the relative position to beacons or modems. Geophysical navigation is using environmental information to perform navigation, which is done with sensors and processings that are capable of detecting and identifying crucial environmental features. For underwater vehicles, the simplest navigational technique is the so-called dead reckoning using the onboard sensor system. This type of navigation is independent of a supporting vessel or external acoustic network so that the vehicle can autonomously determine the position itself and can navigate through the water in a given reference frame which should be set before diving underwater. With the help of an inertial measurement unit where usually an accelerometer and a gyroscope is mounted, the position and heading of the vehicle can be estimated. The accelerometer measures the acceleration in translational motion from which the change of the position can be derived by integrating this value twice with respect to time. Further, the heading is calculated by the change of the rotational movement delivered from the gyroscope. Accumulation of these informations after every iteration gives the position and the heading of an underwater vehicle. However, like every digital sensor, noises are unavoidable, so that with every iteration the error is added to the real measured value. To minimize this error growth, there are several types of digital filters available, for example, Kalman filter. Another type of underwater navigation is using external acoustic systems. Due to the property of water, electromagnetic waves cannot propagate very well. This restriction makes the use of GPS unadaptable, which leads to navigation techniques with acoustic waves for much longer distances. The main principle of acoustic system is the range measurement with the time of flight between external acoustic transmitters and receivers. From one can get the distance by knowing the speed of acoustic waves. Basic components of external acoustic systems are transducers and transponders. An acoustic transducer that combines a transmitter and a receiver sends out an interrogation. The transponder receives this signal and sends it back to the transducer. The distance to the transponder can be calculated by using the simple equation distance is equal to speed of sound multiplied with elapsed time divided by 2. The division by 2 is because of the measurement of the time in two directions from the transducer to the transponder and back. Please consider that in this calculation we assume for ease and is no change of vehicle's position while the acoustic wave is propagating. Like the GPS technique, the vehicle's three-dimensional position can be determined by triangulation of the calculated distances to the transponders. To obtain better accuracy, often our death sensor is also fused in the calculation. For external acoustic systems, three different types are existing based on the range between transducers or transponders, which are called baselines. The first acoustic navigation type is the short baseline with a baseline length of 20 meters up to 50 meters. Three or more separate sonar transducers, connected together and centralized, are mounted on a supporting vessel. The target object, in most cases a remotely operated vehicle, is equipped with a transponder. To target the vehicle, the transducer A sends a signal which will be received and immediately sent back by the transponder D. The transducers A B and C will receive the AHOT signal and calculate the resulting target position relative to the location of the baseline transducers. In order to know the target's position Earth coordinates, vessels are mostly combined with a GPS receiver to synchronize with the calculated distances. The accuracy on the SPL system is dependent on the mounting method and the spacing of the transducers. More spacing leads to better accuracy so that smaller vessels have reduced precision. It should be also noted 
that the spacing between the transducers is much less compared to the distance of the target. Therefore, this type of system is commonly used to track an immersible with respect to a surface platform like an oil drilling. Another application for the SPL system is the search and rescue service of a crashed airplane. A big advantage of the SPL system is that it doesn't require any deployment of transponders on the seafloor. This reduces the operational costs and complexity and makes it an easy tool to use. On the other hand, it needs large baselines for better accuracy, a very exact calibration of the system and a deployment machine for the transducers. The second acoustic navigation type is the long baseline, with a baseline length of 100 meters up to 6 kilometers. To use this navigation technique, the operational area should be known well because an acoustic net of transponders need to be set up on the seafloor. In addition, a transponder can be fixed on a vessel with a GPS receiver to obtain the target's position in Earth's coordinates. Error minimalizing is done by an accurate calibration of the topology. To target the object precisely, the distances between the transponders, the information about their depth, and the GPS position of the vessel are used to set up a local inertial frame. The operation is similar to that of SPL system. The vehicle's transducer A sends a signal to the net of transponders. These echo the signal back so that the vehicle can estimate its position to all directions. One important difference is that the LBL navigation technique is highly dependent on frequency. From the table one can see that at lower frequency range used for interrogation has a higher effective, but in contrast, the accuracy gets lower. To achieve a maximum operational range, the majority of the LBS system is in the medium frequency band. In regard to the SPL navigation system, the LBL navigation system has more advantages, like the precise position estimation independent of water depth. Another crucial advantage is the providing of operational range over large areas. But on the other side, the LBL system is very complex and the installation of the transponders on the seafloor is time intensive. One should also consider that at higher depth, divers cannot mount the transponders on the seafloor, so that extra vehicles are needed for fulfillment of the task. There is also a different type of navigation technique based on the classical LBL system which is called the Mobile LBS System or GPS Intelligent Boys. Here, boys with GPS are spread on the water surface, while the transponders are underwater at predetermined depths. This technique is easier to set up and can save money. One need only to anchor the boys to prevent a movement caused by the ocean current. The third type of navigation technique is the ultra short baseline navigation with a baseline length less than 10 cm. A transceiver with an array of three or more transducers is mounted on the bottom of a vessel. The distance measurement is the same as previously described technique depending on the time of flight. The only difference is that also an angle or heading determination is required, which is done by the so-called phase differentiating technique. Here, the arrival angle of the acoustic parts from the vehicle is used to identify the heading. To avoid ambiguities in phase angle measurements, the transducers in the array are separated by half of the wavelength of the acoustic signal. Additionally, further sensors like GPS and an electronic compass are needed to estimate the vehicle's position in Earth's coordinates and to synchronize the vehicle's heading in the vessel's orientation. The advantage of this navigation technique is the low system complexity, which allows portability and makes the system an easy tool to use. Furthermore, there is no need of transponder mounting on the seafloor. But as mentioned at the SPL system, the accuracy of position determination is dependent on baseline length, so that USPL has less accuracy. The vessel's electronic compass has also an effect on the absolute position accuracy, which is an error source more. Another type of underwater navigation technique is the geophysical navigation system. Here, underwater terrain and surrounding environmental features are used as references. Basically, 
Physical features are observed to estimate the vehicle's position. These features can be tidal inlets, hydrothermal vents, special rock formations, geomagnetic data, or basimetry, which are used to create a map of the area. But it should be said that this type of navigation technique is still in research and therefore not really in use. As usual in every electrical system, sensors and electronic components are affected by noises. With increasing noise, the accuracy in acoustic position estimation is getting less. There are existing several noise sources with varying level of destruction. First, the ambient noise, which are created by external factors like rain, wind, or undersea creatures. This type of noise is hardly to eliminate and should therefore always be considered. Second, the propulsion noise, caused by the vehicle's propulsion system. To reduce this noise effect, the propulsion system should be placed far away from the transducers and transponders. Third, the machinery noise, generated by pumps or pressure valves, is a limiting factor of achieving good performances in navigation. Sometimes, if the noise is too high, it can also happen that the navigation system is completely interrupted. Furthermore, the flow noise, created by any turbulent boundary layer, this source factor is not really a big affecting issue. Finally, the reverberation due to scattering effects of particle matter, water surface, bottom layers and man-made structures is another noise source. In most cases, the interference with the acoustic signal can be destructive so that the navigation system gets completely useless. All these noises cannot be completely eliminated, but with high efforts and researches can be brought to an acceptable state. In general, the underwater localization techniques are using information about their neighbor nodes, which can be obtained from the receive signal by the receive signal strength indicator, the angle of arrival, the time of arrival, or the time difference of arrival to put this later, in alteration for localization. Localization techniques can be separated into three parts in stationary, mobile and hybrid. In stationary localization, all sensors, either on surface points or on seafloor, have fixed localizations. In mobile localization, all sensors are not fixed and can freely propagate through water, for example autonomous underwater vehicles. And in hybrid localization, Stationary and mobile sensors are combined together. These three types can again be divided into two parts, in distributed and centralized form. In a distributed localization, each underwater node collects data and uses it to estimate their localization individually by itself, while in a centralized localization, these data are united and handled by a base station. As it can be seen in the figure, there are at the moment sort of localization algorithms existing. Because of time consideration in this video, only one technique for each subcategory will briefly explain. For more information, please refer to given reference, where all techniques are summarized and compared with each in regard to ranging method, localization accuracy, energy consumption and computational complexity. Before describing these techniques, three types of sensor nodes should be explained, which are anchor nodes, Unknown nodes and reference nodes. Unknown nodes' main task is observing data from the environment. Anchor nodes are responsible for localization of unknown nodes, and reference nodes are formed of localized unknown nodes and initial anchor nodes. Let us see now the different techniques. The first technique in the stationary and centralized localization is called the area localization sham ALS. ALS estimates the position of every unknown node within an area rather than its exact localization. Anchor nodes are sending signals with different power levels to localize unknown nodes, which are listening to these signals and note the IDs of every anchor node and their appropriate power levels. These informations then are sent to a base station, who is assumed to know already the positions of anchor nodes, so that with complex calculations, a localization map of unknown nodes can be created. The benefit of this technique is that there is no need of any synchronization task. Also it saves energy of unknown nodes because all calculations are done by the base station. But the performance can get lower if the positions of anchor nodes are changing due to water currents 
and it cannot be used for applications with high accuracy demands. Another technique in the same category but in distributed form is called node discovery and localization protocol. Starting from a primary node S1, under the assumption that the position is known, this node is searching for a second, farthest away node S2. The reason for the farthest node selection is for covering large areas more quickly. A third node S3 is then chosen by these two nodes within both communication ranges. Now, each node can determine its relative location by using simple triangulation in the grey marked area. This technique is free from any anchor and is used for large scale applications, but the energy consumption for searching nodes are high. For mobile centralized navigation technique, there are five shams existing. One of them is the absolute positioning sham. Here an underwater vehicle is tracked by time difference measurement. A signal sent by the vehicle is directly received at the surface and indirectly received a yacht by a transponder. These two times are compared together and with a depth measurement sensor on the vehicle, the localization can be done. This technique can only track one vehicle at one time. For the mobile distributed navigation technique, the dive and rise positioning sham is the commonly used technique in deep water because of simplicity. Mobile beacons, equipped with GPS receiver, are broadcasting their positions while they are sinking and rising. The unknown nodes are listening to messages from the beacons, which are the anchor nodes, and calculate the ranges by using the time of arrival. From several beacons, the unknown nodes estimate their coordinates. This technique has two disadvantages. One is the energy consumption of the unknown nodes, because they are always listening passively. Second, Diving and rising takes longer time than the propagation of the messages, so that the performance is highly dependent on number of anchor nodes and frequency. The hybrid centralized localization technique 3D multi-power area localization sham is an extended version of previously explained ALS technique, so that it can also work in deep water. Beside anchor and unknown nodes, there are a small number of points on the water surface, each of them equipped with a detachable elevator transceiver DET. A DET is composed of an elevator and a multi-power level acoustic transceiver. With the help of the elevator, the DET can rise or dive while the transceiver communicates with anchor nodes after predetermined depth. The boys with GPS receiver pass on their position to the DET. The transceiver starts to communicate with the anchor nodes after broadcasting level is reached. Anchor nodes require a connection with minimum 3 DETs to obtain the position. After the position is known, this technique behaves like the ALS technique. Anchor nodes are sending signals with different power levels to localize unknown nodes, which are listening to these signals and note the IDs of every anchor node and their appropriate power levels. A base station is later receiving these informations to calculate the position of the unknown nodes. The time for localization depends heavily on the velocity and sending interval of the DET. The last technique shown in this video is the hybrid distributed localization range free sham based on mobile beacons. Instead of many deployed beacons, only one mobile beacon acting as an anchor node is broadcasting its position periodically while moving on water surface. The interval distance is marked as D. An unknown node can receive five beacon signals. After three connections are chosen, the mobile beacon position can be projected on the same level as the unknown node. Knowing R from time of arrival and L from depth sensor, X can be calculated. After determining X for each of the three beacons, the unknown node can localize itself. Despite of the fact that this technique is easy to install, it is very rarely in use because of the high energy consumption of the mobile beacon. The localization time and accuracy depends highly on sending interval and it cannot localize unknown nodes in deep water.
In this video, several up-to-date navigation and localization techniques were briefly presented. For more information, please refer to given references. Thank you for your attention.